2 Kings chapter 19. Hezekiah is on the throne in Judah, and he's a proper king, doing that which is right of the Lord. And we have learned that Assyria has come. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it. Now they read, they met with, Hezekiah's men has met with Rabshakeh, who was under King Sennacherib. They've just come back to Hezekiah, chapter 19, picks up with the scribe, the recorder, and uh, one that was over his house, explaining to him what had happened. When he heard that he rent his clothes, it means he tore them, got upset, angered, frustrated, and covered himself with sackcloth. And you see this with the people of Nineveh, when Jonah comes in and repents. They put the sackcloth on. It's the worst type of itchy kind of clothing. It's, we're just next to dirt. You would put potatoes in them. It went into the house of the Lord. Now look at that. He runs right to the house of the Lord. And he sent Elkayim, which was over the household. This would be like Joseph. And Shebna, the scribe, he's in charge of the priests. He's in charge, in charge of scrolls. And the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth. So here he is. He, he walks into the house of the Lord. There's just been great distress of this Rapshika and his aims that we're going to destroy Jerusalem. And he gathers the priests, he gathers the scribes, and he says, everybody, put sackcloth on. This is not a joyous time. To Isaiah, and that's the first time Isaiah shows up in the Bible. So Isaiah is around the time of Hezekiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. So Isaiah has one priest right now, I mean one king right now who's doing right. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. That's the first time that word shows up, and that's a reference of Rapshadaka. Blaspheming God, making fun of God. God, your God is just as bad as the gods we conquered. For the children are come to birth, and there is no strength to bring forth. And the, the, the typology here is, here's a woman, she's pregnant, it's time for her birth, but she has no strength to give the birth. They tell her to push, she, she can't. She can't. Rachel dies this way. She dies in the uh, childbirth of Benjamin. It may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rapshika, whom the king of Syria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. Now notice how the king of Syria, Sennacherib, he's being charged with the big mouth of Rapshika, as Ahab was being charged for Jezebel's reactions. Hey, this is the king. This is the ruler. He sent this numbskull. He sent this, this big mouth prideful guy in there to speak. He is an ambassador. And when uh, all countries realize when you send an ambassador, how that guy acts, God is going to charge whatever you call that, that nation's leader, whether it be president, king, prime minister, whatever it is. And we've got to realize that not only do we have to give an account of ourselves, but there may be situations where we will have to give an account for others. A leader of his people, of his nation, of his cabinet. A husband in charge of a wife. A father in charge of the children. And reprove, that's the first time that word shows up, blame, charge with fault. That's what is accurate. He gave God a foolish talk. The words which the Lord thy God has heard. Wherefore lift up thy prayer. Now look at that. Let's go to prayer. Now look at verse 3. It says, Thus saith Hezekiah. He, he's in trouble. He's got problems. He runs to God. He goes to the priest. He says, put on sackcloth. He appears before Isaiah. And he said, let's pray. For the remnant that are left. So the Redmans also couldn't pack this, Israel's gone. It's just Judah. Assyria has already taken Israel captive. We're, we're the ones that are left. Lord God, don't take us too. Here's Isaiah's answer. 
All right. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord. All right. Go back to Hezekiah. Tell him, This is what God said. Be not, oh, excuse me, be not afraid. That's what Jesus kept saying. Fear not. Of the words which thou hast heard, of Rabshika, with which the servants of the king of Assyria had blasted me. Now look at look what God said. You think I was fooled? God says, Rabshika, that man is blasphemy me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor. That's the first time rumor shows up. And he shall return to his own land. Now look at the word rumor. There is a special clause in the Bible when a word first shows up, it's got significance. And you got to look at the context. The context of the word rumor is a man that has blasphemed God. And I'm going to prove to his destruction he's going to hear such a rumor. And shall return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. He's going to fall. You don't badmouth God. You don't badmouth the Jews. I will curse them that curse you. He told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Rabshika returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna. Yeah, he comes back now there's a war. For he had heard that he, that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say uh, Tarhika, king of Ethiopia, they show up every once in a while, Behold, he has come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again unto Hezekiah. He's in the middle of a war. And he's sending word back to Hezekiah again. Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, that's a great testimony, of the heathen, of the enemy. Hezekiah, you trust that God. I know you trust that God. You better not trust that God. I hope Somebody said, will say that about me someday. Help somebody say, hey, that guy, you know, we didn't like him, but he was a Christian. And he believed and he trusted in what he said. Hope there's no doubt when I die. Hope nobody will say, well, I don't know where he's going to be. Hezekiah's got that testimony. He trusts God. In whom thou trustest deceive thee. Now, he's, look what he's saying. God is deceiving you, Hezekiah. <laughs> Man, this guy, he's not only buried himself a hole for a funeral, but he's jumped in the hole himself. <laughs> the saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Syria. And God's going to defend him. God's going to protect him. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Syria have done to all lands. It's true. The king of Assyria, the Assyrian company has done the same thing as Alexander the Great, as the great Roman Empire had done, as China has done. And yet with their false gods and all that, they came to an end. Rome is not the power it is anymore. Alexander the Great died. The great emperors of China, they're dead. King of Assyria, Assyrians, they're gone. But the Jews are still where they are today. Rabshika, you got a foul mouth, you got a foolish mouth, you got a prideful mouth. The God of the Jews, the God of Hezekiah, that is my God, hey, has done to all lands. He's by destroying them utterly, shalt thou be delivered? Yeah, he trusts in God. Everybody else didn't trust in God. You know, when all time has come, and we, we spoke about this in our Bible study today, Wednesday, when all time has come and the final judgment has happened, the great white throne judgment, those who are Christians by the blood of Jesus Christ will endure all religions, including Baptists. And the Jews who are not in the church age have done prescribed what God has ordered in the scriptures. They will follow anybody who went against their conscience of the Gentiles. And in the end run, when the new heavens, the new Jerusalem, the new earth have come, those have done what God, Jehovah of Hezekiah, the God of the Bible, the God of the creation, 
the God of salvation, will stand off in eternity with mercy and grace. And those that stand for anything but God will be in the lake of fire that burns forever. I'll take the God that give me mercy and grace for all eternal life. Have the gods and nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? No, because they're gods. Walk up to a statue and have a conversation with them. Go ahead. Say, Mr. Saint Statue, you like my, my clothes today? Do they do I have any spots? you see any spots? Uh, statue, you hearing me? you listening to me? Yeah, see, you got ears. Here, statue, shake my hand. You got hands. Dagon couldn't do nothing. He hit the ground right before the Ark of the Covenant. Have the gods and nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gazan, as Haram, Rephiv, and children of Eden, which were in Teslar. Now look, it's the same thing. Look at history repeating itself. Look how good Alexander the Great went. Well, look how good Assyria's going. Look at Genghis Khan. Look how well he did. And look how well Asia, I mean, uh, Assyria's done. And they're dead and buried and they lost everything they got. Probably burning in hell today. Hezekiah still got Jerusalem. Jerusalem's still the Jews. Hezekiah is in glory. Where is the king Harmoth, and the king Arphad, and the king of the cities of Shaphadim, and Hena, and Iva? They're all dead. They got fallen gods. But if their name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, Revelation 20, they will go into to be with the Lord. And we don't know about these kings. We don't know how they live. Maybe they did live right by God. Possible. But Rabshika and Sennacherib, I don't think your name's ever going to be found in that book. And possibly we may see that some of these people. Maybe not. I don't know. We're not told much. And Hezekiah received the letter in the hand of the messengers. So it was written. It's put down. It's in print. Hezekiah gets that letter. Look what he does. And he read it. Okay. You do that. with. Letter. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord. He goes back to the temple. And he walks up to the temple and he takes that letter and he spreads it out before the Lord. What's Hezekiah doing? He's bringing his troubles to God. God, you see this letter? I know you see the letter, but here it is, Lord. Here is written proof in your house of the Jewish people in Jerusalem with the priests all around me. Here's the proof, Lord. Look, he brings God proof. And Hezekiah prayed. Look at that. Before the Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R. He didn't pray to small G-O-D-S's. He prayed to God and said, O Lord God of Israel. That's the right God. That's the one that brought him out of Egypt, which dwells between the cherubims. Now, we don't know where he is in this temple. I don't know if he would venture into the courtyard. But I know what he's doing is he's looking, wherever he is, he's looking west, east to west. And he may see the doors. He knows behind that door there's a table, there's a candlestick, there's the altar incense. And he knows there's a veil behind that. And he knows behind that veil there's the Ark of the Covenant. And he knows on the Ark of the Covenant there's those cherubims. And between them cherubims is the mercy seat. And that God that sits on that mercy seat, that's the God he's pleading to. He may he is not in the Holy of Holies, but he's he's had enough to know what is in the Holies of Holies. And he's saying that God that appears on that mercy seat once a year, the Day of Atonement, that's the God I am pleading to. That's the God that can give victory over GODSs. Thou art the God. That sure ain't what Rapture could have been saying. Even thou alone. There's one God is what he's saying. Of all the kingdoms of the earth. Uh, a Rapture could have said this place, that place, those place, these people, that people, them people. What about those people? God, you're the God of all gods. All those nations have been destroyed. 
because you were not the God of them people. Thou has made heaven and earth. Look at that. Create no evolution. Lord, bow down thy ear. Lord God, will you humble yourself? Will you lend me your ear? A statue can't do that. A G-O-D-S can't do that. And here, open, Lord, thy eyes. Lord God, will you see this letter? Will you see me? And see. Hear the words of Sennacherib. Here's a letter, Lord. Which has sent him to reproach the living God. It's actually Rabshakeh. But again, Sennacherib, who's in charge, is being charged with the fall. The Lord says, living God, the God of the mercy seat, the God between the cherubim, the God that's the creator, the God that's the God of the Jews, the living God of truth, Lord, Jehovah. And I say that because that's what the Lord is right there, all capitals, Jehovah. The kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands. True. Yep. And they have cast their gods into the fire. Type of hell. God will, pass, God will pass off one day those worshipers of those gods into the lake of fire. They were no gods. All right, Hezekiah. Remember what Hezekiah, let's come back over here to chapter 18, verse 4. 2 Kings 18, 4, Hezekiah. Hezekiah, he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves. And break the pieces of the brazen serpent which Moses made, which they called the God. Verse 5, he trusted the Lord God of Israel. Man, he has just destroyed the religions. And he's saying, Lord, those nations that have been conquered by Assyria, they're just religions. I'm a Protestant. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a Shinto. I'm a... a, a you know, yin yang, uh, whatever I'm in Judah, I'm in karate, whatever I am. And if you're not a born again Bible believing Christian, then you, you'll be conquered by God. But the work of men's hands, look at that, made by man. Pick up the statues made in China. That ain't gonna, God ain't going to save you. Made in Taiwan. That ain't gonna, God's going to save your soul. Wood and stone. That does you a lot of good. Therefore they have not they therefore they have destroyed them. Israel had all these idols. That's why Israel's gone. Israel did not have the Jehovah of Hezekiah. Now therefore, you know, now, Lord, now, Lord, now, I mean, hey, he trusts in the Lord, he he, he loves the Lord, he wants to do right, but Lord God help. It's okay to be nervous when problems. Hey, listen, I if an army shows up at your front door, I'd be nervous too. Now, therefore, Lord, our God, our God, not their God, our God, Hezekiah, hey, you're my God. I beseech thee, <laughs> Lord God, I search you. Save thou us out of, out of his hand, that all the kings of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Lord God, you get the victory. They know who you are here. They know that that God over there, them Jews, that's the God that got them out of Egypt. That's the God that protected them through the book of Judges. That's the God of David. Listen, the history's there. That's the big temple that Solomon built. And when he went, went for all the worship of gods and the thousand wives and all that, that's when there was troubles and problems in the kingdom. Oh, look how mess Israel was. Well, look at all the gods that Israel had. Look at Hezekiah. He's standing firm. Why? Because he has the God. And we'll look at the next night, Lord willing, we're going to look at Jehovah's answer to Hezekiah. And unlike the gods of wood and stone, God is going to speak. That's the difference between Jesus Christ and religion. Religion can't speak. But oh, Jesus Christ can. Glory to God in the highest.